Yeah, come on up. You guys, come on up. Y'all give a hand to some of our guys this morning. Come on in, guys. Come on, have a seat. We're going to do a little bit of a locker room talk, if that's okay with you guys this morning. And here's the deal. I'm, I am just strong and fresh, testing your grace and humility right this morning, wearing the burnt orange. Who, who in here is a Texas fan, right? Do we have one other one? I think Curtis. We've got two. We've got three. Okay. We're good. Who in here might be a... Yeah. <laughs> Who in here might be a Razorback fan, a lifelong Razorback fan? All right. So if this doesn't chest your grace and mercy, I don't know what will. Okay, guys, we're about to find out who's really here to follow Christ and not, this, not the pastor. Amen. Like we're here for Christ. We're here for God. Good to see you guys this morning. I like our National Guard jersey over here. We got the Kansas City Chiefs. Who's who's thinking that's the Chiefs or Eagles gonna gonna take the win today? I, I think I, yeah. I th okay. <laughs> All right. We had to get that out of the way. Happy Super Bowl Sunday for you guys that actually watch football still, right? Most of us are wearing our college gear for a reason, but but there there still might be a few of us left in the our Cowboys fans out there. All right, yeah. <laughs> God. For, for, forgive us, Lord. We're gonna we're gonna confess idolatry this morning and pray. Uh, John, won't you pray for us? <laughs> okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity to come together and learn more about you. Uh, as we go through this lesson and we go through this time of uh, not just learning but fellowship. Let us take these lessons and hide them in our hearts so that when we go out into this world that we can spread that light that Jesus gives us so that those who don't know him can have that relationship. And we pray those things in his name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we have a couple of mics for you guys. Um, maybe turn me down a little bit unless you guys are, are hearing me perfectly. I sound loud. Archie, you know how to turn this on. You guys know how to turn this on. We're in a series called The Parable of the Sower. The parable of the sower. Mark 4, 1 through 9. Y'all turn in your Bibles with me to get there. We're reviewing what we talked about last week. Uh, but before we do this, I need to ask for forgiveness and apologize. There were four dudes this week. Four dudes this week that we thought we'd do a fun video with them. Did you guys see something about this Hot Wings halftime video? I think 4,000 people saw this on Facebook already. And it was supposed to be a Bible trivia fun game, right? That was the idea. There was trivia. <laughs> there, was trivia. there was trivia. So if you missed it, if you missed it, watch this. Watch a, a quick clip of it. These guys are eating some hot wings while they answer Bible trivia. Is it my turn? Is it deutrimony or detrimony? Deuteronomy. Where's Nick? Everybody in here needs to go give Nick a hug and encourage him on his journey in the Bible. Like, that's, that's what we're here for. You know what's cool about that? First of all, Archie owned that challenge from Bible knowledge and his ability to eat some very hot wings. Like, those are hot, right? Or not really, Archie? I thought they were delicious. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many skillets Tim kissed before he got there. But. Yeah, Tim kissing skillets. That sounds like a rock band from the 80s, bro. No, we're having a little bit of fun. Having a little bit of fun in God's Word. Here's what was cool about that. As soon as Nick pr pronounced Deuteronomy like wrong twice, all three of the other, other dudes were like, it's Deuteronomy. And, 
And that's like an old dad joke in it, like, like dude around to me. All right, we're diving in. Forgive me, guys. I did not realize the hot wings were going to be that hot. Let me just say that. And, and I think Josh Probus blamed that on me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'll take it, Josh. I'll take it. It was my fault, bro. All right? So into God's Word. Mark 4, 1 through 9, the parable of the sower. We are literally, we are right now in this scripture with Christ, with the disciples. He's got hundreds of people around him listening to him speak and teach in parables. And he's talking to two. Are you saying you can't hear me? <laughs> Myra's giving me the signals. <laughs> She's, he's talking to his disciples and he's talking to them about the parables. The reason why he's sharing about the parables is because this is mostly what Jesus taught him. And then we're, we're going to go around the horn here, but let me just review last week. Mark 4, 1 through 9. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd gathered around him. It was so large, he got in the boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching, he said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. He was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it. Some fell along the rocky places where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and when they withered, they began because they had no root other seed fell along the thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. This is what we talked about last week. It came up and grew and produced crop and many and some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. And then Jesus said, and here's where we landed, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. The seed, just as a review, God's Word. The seed is God's Word in the life-changing reality of Jesus Christ. That's all Jesus was trying to say. It's like, hey, plant the seed within you, God's Word in your heart. Make sure that you have good soil when you're planting that. Like we can't, how do we have good soil? We have to forgive a ton, like 70 times 7. Otherwise, the heart gets, the heart gets hard, doesn't it? We have to Walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Otherwise, we, we take part in the things of this world, which are, Scripture says, are thorns, right? And we're going to talk about that. We've got some good dudes up here this morning. The crop is, the fruit is God's. And we get to enjoy it too, but the fruit is God's. He's the one that's growing it. He is in charge of the results. And good soil our hearts and willingness to hear and understand. I might need to borrow one of your mics because this is much better. Are you guys hearing that too? Okay. A little distracted. So here's the part. We're gonna we're gonna open up with an easy question for you guys and we're gonna ask the next one. It's not easy getting up here, so y'all y'all be praying for these dudes. But maybe you 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 open to what God would share to all of us in this church, sons and daughters, and every man and woman that get up here together, because these are a few of our teachers back in the kids' ministry, some of our dudes that invest in the men's ministry, and I was just, you know, I was thinking, so these dudes are praying for me, and so I'm just thinking, man, what are you doing with this church that we're doing, and what you're doing, and what God wants to do with this church? So here's the first question, maybe it's an easy one. Today we're talking about the field is ripe for harvest. It's Super Bowl Sunday, if you, if you didn't know that, okay? So we thought we'd have some fun. Let's start with where are you where are you from? Right? Where are you from? Where were you born? And what's your favorite football team? I'm from the big city of Paris, Arkansas, down towards Fort Smith and Mount Magazine. Um, never knew where Little Rock or anything outside that area was for since I was about twenty three when I joined the guard and got to do great and marvelous things for the last thirty years. So uh, oh yeah, I'm Curtis McElroy. Christy, um, that's good enough. Well, I'm I'm Archie Stanfield. Um, I was actually born and raised in Central Indiana. Uh, my family's all from Arkansas, so I still kind of have felt like we had roots here. And um, 
I don't know. I can't really think of a good team. Really, that I like. <laughs> it was the Colts for a while, and then I, then I liked them. Yeah, yeah. I can relate. Uh, my only Brian that I like is the gorgeous purple one that Sam Howell has. Just <laughs> the long black hair and the and the Cindy. And we're uh, I'm over here with friends in Baltimore City, and uh, being about 20 minutes south. Which eighty five is the year I was born, so uh, and and Indianapolis Colts because some idiot in the NFL ended up like our guest said, and uh, that's how we got here. <laughs> well, good morning. My name is John Dodd. Uh, cavity here is my hometown. I moved here. I grew up here. I went to school here. I graduated from college here. And I'm still here. Uh, you know, I grew up uh, in the eighties, early nineties. I always enjoyed watching uh, the good defenses of the time. I, I, I also enjoyed uh, an offensive lineman when I played football, so I enjoyed nice. William Perry, the refrigerator yeah. for the Bears, uh, Lawrence Taylor on defense, and then obviously Icky Woods. Every time he made a touchdown, he's my favorite. However, I really enjoy the refs in the game. They're kind of like the police officers in the game. If they could just write tickets, I think it'd be the perfect job. <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. So here's the deal. Y'all be thinking, we're going to answer this in the question. The question is, when Jesus shared the types of soil, the hard path, the rocky places, the thorn and the good soil, we're going to talk about what came to mind. And I'm going to read the scripture before we get there. So go ahead. If this, is this on, Josh? I put my headset back on. Maybe we can, is that better? Okay. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along the rocky places where it did not have much soil and sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil and it came, it grew and produced a crop. So multiplying 30, 60 and a hundred times. I mean, as you guys read scripture like that, a part of what we do is say, hey, this is what jumped out at me. Like, this is what spoke to me. What is this scripture? Like, what does it bring to mind for you guys? So for, for me, I've been on a journey the last few years to uh, kind of up my game, uh, put me in coach kind of mentality. Uh, I've always been in a church uh, leadership role at some point, but, you know, I've been blessed in that manner. But the last five years, I've been taught through the Word and through brothers' uh, encouragement. Uh, key word there for me is obedience. Mm-hmm. You're always going to have that rough, rocky soil when the thorns are there. It's just if you're going to make it through stuff like COVID and uh, the, the current trials of the world's going to come at us, you've got to be obedient. It's like this morning, uh, we all have a choice. God does, can't do much with fleshly trials or fleshly attempts to serve him, but he wants our heart. So when our, our heart is obedient, it's what God's taught me over the past five years to my game. Don't focus so much on the negative uh, that we all know that's there. You've got to pull out that positive and be obedient to that. And that's where the, what he read the passage about being uh, uh, the ears to hear. Hmm. There's your chance to obey. Amen. Man gets up here and preaches the word of God, or a brother brings you the word of God. That's your chance to be obedient. Just obey. Do, do what it told us. Uh, uh, read the book. Do the thing. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. We just keep it that way, and not so focused on all the negative stuff, but that pulls away from God's goodness. Amen. Yeah. Christ. Christ is the head of the church, and the the word, the full counsel of God's word, is our guide. Amen. And. When it says, right, when it gives us the truth in love, we say, and especially when it grades on our hearts, and we're like, God, you're not talking to me with that, right? You're not talking to me. You can't be. Like, it's like, I'm going to submit. I'm going to be obedient to what your word says, because I know your plan is good, and I know I can trust you. That's a good word. I mean, for, for me, it was kind of jumped out that, you know, at certain points in my life, even today, 
I can be any one of those four types of soil myself. Yeah. Uh, it's not just about you know the seeds that we sow, whether it's in kids ministry or out on the street talking to people. It's sometimes you know you got to look at yourself and say, you know what, I think I'm a little bit rocky right now. That's right. Um, and then, and then you know, you gotta you gotta then take it to to the father, take it to your brothers, say I'm feeling a little rocky right now. Can you help me out? And that's that's kind of what comes down to. That's good. That's good. Yeah, when we find ourselves, right, the the hard path that gets walked on constantly, maybe a hardened heart, or the rocky soil where like everything seems to be bruising and hurting and, and what our emotions rise up. And God's word has something to say about those. He says, Hey, sometimes you can't you can't trust those emotions, right? You've got a you've got a like put a little bit more good soil on top of that, right? You need that rich soil instead of shallow soil because when the, when the trials come in life, like that's the only thing that's going to keep you rooted. His Word. His presence. Yeah, that's good. We're constantly having to cultivate our own, our own heart. That's good. Yeah, there's something quick in there. and We could probably do a full message series on it later in a study as a church. And it's, here's the question. Did Christ come to condemn the world? Right? He could have done that. He, I mean, look what happened with Noah, right? The flood came and wiped out this fallen world, like which... If we were there, we would have been a part of that, maybe. Like, there was just a few, right, faithful people that made it onto that boat. Christ didn't come to condemn the world. He came to redeem it. Think about that for a moment. He said, I came to redeem this fallen world. And through God's grace, it's giving us this window of time that we feel like is long. But it is like a blink of an eye when he will return that second time. He came to redeem. I like your word cross-pollinate, right? So are there weeds? Is there evil on this planet? Absolutely. Can God use you? 
to redeem. That's the power of Jesus. If you believe that there's power in His name and power in the Scripture, we can take that anywhere. And no, we shouldn't go alone. We should take a couple of brothers with us. So that's good work. And I think one of the things is that sometimes we have to believe in the seeds that we're sowing. Mm. You know, if we don't wholeheartedly believe that these seeds are going to produce fruit, you know, our effort is in vain. Mm. You know, we know that some of it's going to get scattered, some of it's going to get lost, but we still have to believe at the end of the day that what we're doing, you know, we can't, you know, last year's harvest was fantastic, or it was bad, but that was last year. You know, we're worried about this year's harvest and the seeds that we're sowing right now. We have to truly believe that they will produce fruit, even if we don't see it right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to believe in the seeds that we're sowing. Amen. And it's what's interesting is it's it's about so I'm gonna translate the word believe to trust or know the assurance of faith because um, it doesn't require our belief that that seed would grow and and that's not what John was saying. What he's saying is we can stand firm on the fact that God's word and Christ is going to do what they're going to do. He's going to do what he's going to do. And all we have to do is be faithful and so. So where I thought you were going, and I think you did, was I talk a lot about marriage and relationships. And this is true of all of our relationships on this earth. We all start out in this honeymoon phase where we get to see the best of one another. Then we get to the what? The disillusionment phase where, and for those of you that are engaged and about to get married, here you go. This is a free marriage counseling real quick. We go from honeymoon to disillusionment. And it's not if, it's when. It's when. When we're looking at that other person going, oh my gosh, who is this person that I married? Right? We start seeing each other in our flaws that come from this fallen world, which all of us have, 100% of us. Except one, except Jesus Christ. And then we finally get to that point where, as John was saying, when we're believing because of Christ, right, we're going to grow through this. Because of Christ, we're going to get to the disillusionment and finally get to what God made us for, the maturity. The maturity of faith, standing firm in the faith. Amen. Amen, bro. I'll try not to preach every time you guys share, all right? So here's the next question for y'all. We can. Why is it so hard? And maybe, maybe it's just some of us. Maybe I don't know. You guys can share your personal daily walk. Why is it so hard for us to do what Christ is actually telling the disciples to do right here, and the crowd that's behind them, just to get in God's word, like actually plant the word and share Christ with others? Why, why do you think that's so hard for us today? Bible tells us we're a real clear mind. And it's real clear that uh, uh, Genesis 1, 3, 6, 9, and all through Genesis, God Almighty reestablished his purpose for mankind. Mm-hmm. It's just three simple words. Be fruitful and then multiply. Amen. And it failed miserably in the very first day. All through the Old Testament. Right from the beginning, right? Exactly. And kept kept going. So for me, that tells choices. For me, it goes back to the choices of being obedient, uh, which we can choose to be in walking in our flesh or walking in the Spirit of uh, God Almighty, which you understand His original purpose is to give you more than understanding, to give mm-hmm. you heartfelt, genuine efforts to do better. Mm-hmm. And on the flip side of the coin, share, share some of the ways that you've experienced joy from doing this. Like like, how do you see... Well, so we talked about expectance uh, and, and believing in those seeds. Um, you know, I, I'm, thank God I'm a product of uh, biblical discipleship since I was 13. When my father passed, I had uh, about four biblical men step into my life from 13 to 20s, into my 30s and 40s to keep me uh, balanced in the Word. So the Word has always been at the core of what I believe. And as I've matured,
mature to understand that um, it's more than head knowledge. It's got to be uh, heartfelt. Mm. To make it through these worlds, these trials, mm -hmm. and to understand. Um, you know, there was a lot of smart men in the Old Testament. Uh, Brother Solomon failed constantly because his heart wasn't right yet. Amen. God, God worked all that out in his timing. That's why it's been so uplifting. And, and to go back to the expectant prayer, expect. Amen. We pray that God will bless. And if you're obedient, I know this probably puts me in church. It's almost like a money back guarantee. <laughs> so let me say this and then we'll, we'll let Archie go next I'm going to brag on Curtis for a minute and embarrass him Cur Curtis is retiring lieutenant colonel from the military and God put Curtis in places he'll share with you one on one put, put him in places where he actually got to share his faith and pray for those who believed and didn't believe even to the point where he kept getting invited back to the Pentagon. And all of the leaders and, and these dudes all around him are asking him, how are you getting access to this? Like, how are you getting access? Like all of his requests were being approved for funding here locally. And they're asking him, how are you doing this? And he said, come with, come with me and I'll show you. So a, a few of his trips, he would go. And they're running into the front doors or wherever the doors are to the Pentagon. I'm sure it's kind of confusing to find the right door. <laughs> but he says, hey, we're, he, kneel, he kneels on the front sidewalk. And the guy said, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God for guidance and favor and wisdom before we walk into these doors. And the guy says, man, are you kidding? We got to get in here. And Curtis says, no, th this is more important than that. And he prayed. And that, I'm bragging on you a little bit, but that was, that, yeah, no, go for it. Y'all give me a hand. That was Curtis's testimony for saying, God, it's not about this. It's about you. And I'm just going to be obedient. Come on. I, 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 <laughs> so. Archie, Archie single-handedly fixes 747s that cannot communicate with each other. He goes in. So let's tell him about that, Archie. <laughs> so, uh, so back to the question, then we'll get to the 747. Okay, okay, cool. But a true story, though. True story. He's the man. You guys hit it hard enough. Take enough hammer and you can fix anything. Amen. Amen. So, so for me, it, it, was, I mean, it was always difficult that we would call we would call it a habit if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, for me it started when when we started the 33 series where we had the daily readings we had to do and actually the, the men's study that we did before that uh, where it's it's a matter of you gotta figure out, you know, do I have time in my day that I can set aside mm. to do this? And for me the only time of the day that I had was while I was still sleeping. Uh, so I moved my alarm back to Wow. Because uh, that was the only time that I had that I knew that I could be without distraction, without anything else, uh, basically just me and the dog who wanted to go outside because it was outside. <laughs> uh, so, and but after after time, it becomes not I gotta get up hmm. so I can go do my daily reading or or whatever it is, and it, it moves from being a sacrifice. Amen. Um, so that's it. It takes a while to build that, um, but for me, that's what it's become. So mm -hmm. and that, for me, starting the day out with, even if it's just the quick passage out of my devotional to the dog at time board, was maybe a four thirty turn into a snooze or two. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now we're being real. <laughs> uh, but but regardless, I still start the day. Mm hmm. Well, and what's cool about this, Archie, is if you know what, what he's talking about, for those of you that are in the Word day after day, on your knees praying to God, say, God, I'm here for you. I need guidance from you, right? Not from this world. We know what it feels like to be able to stand and the waves keep coming and you have this scripture, these promises, this reminder is, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
right? You will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you when they, because we trust you. Like these promises keep coming up, right? Yeah, and it, it's what keeps you going through the days. Like, like you, you've been hurt by a brother or sister, hey, forgive them. Yes, forgive them again and forgive them again. Like it's, it's just constant washing of the word and God saying, hey, are you going to give me that? You give me that, and I'll give you my peace and my kingdom. That's awesome. Way better than the Pentagon story, Archie. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Ryan's a bird of a different color, okay? So, so if you're looking for some, something interesting in your life, and your walk with God, like with Christ, Go to lunch or breakfast with Ryan. He will rock your world. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're always having to text Ryan going, Ryan, that's probably too much for Facebook. Pull that one down, bro. Like, pull that one down. We, it's probably a little too much. So, yeah. Wow. About that. And the flooring was torn up at one point, which was held down by this black bluish tar, whatever it was. And so the only thing on the floor was tile. And if you stepped on that floor, that area of the floor would take the entire thing away. It would rip your shoe off. <laughs> cool. <laughs> to God, it was that strong. So it was easy for you guys to not wear your shoes in the house then. So <laughs> She raised you in the word, like she. Now, yeah. Now jumping to that really quick. Uh, that junior high, high school darkness that I, I touched on in my last answer. I got expelled in junior high, and and, and, and this actually this verse is stupid and ridiculous as a young kid. Um, a friend of mine who gave me a car a car ride to school every day, every day. Um, his name was Rick. Rick Goodwin, I love him for you. <laughs> he, was, he was playing with this knife in the back seat of the going to school. Right, he's putting the blade out. That is such a cool knife. He's like, yeah, take it. I'm like, no way. Yeah, 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 take it. So he gives it to me. I got a little one at home exactly like it. Well, you know, about fifth period, right after lunch, I'm flipping it out, showing people because we were sitting around waiting for the teacher to come into class. Hmm. And all of a sudden, I noticed the three or four guys that were watching me show them what the blade can do were looking at me and looking up behind me. And so I turn around. There come teachers, Mr. Nestor. Story short, I got expelled. Uh, but one little detail, I remember my pastor at the time stood up to me mm. like an advocate. Man, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Thank God for that mercy and love. He stood up to me at the, at, in front of the school board and said, uh, just talk to me. And, and they allowed me to homeschool and in order to pass the grade. So wow. I, the grade. I did homeschool and I did pass the grade. This is where the beauty of the my mom said, from here on out, every single day, you're going to do these 30 to 60 scriptures. It was a booklet that my mom has selected for me. I'm humility, I'm obedient, I'm hungry and thirsty for the word of God. Wow. I was a teenager, angry at my mom. <laughs> totally he shared this story before. He like, tune into this and part. You, the young people in this room, you'll, you'll understand it to some extent. Saying, 
history of his movie scriptures, every single thing, 30 to 60 scriptures. Now, the way he would do them is he would put them in the first person. So if the Bible says, I am the Rechaba, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I would say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The first person about myself. He would call these Jewish detectives. I was doing 30 to 60 of them a day. My mom was, again, trying to make ends meet for us, so she would go up to go to work. And here I am alone doing these. Never once did it occur to me. I promise. <laughs> one time for the entire year that I was home alone doing these scriptures, did it occur to me that I could just not do them and say that I did it. It sincerely never once occurred to me. I'm going to so much things just don't stick there. You would, do, you would do them the whole time. <laughs> Moms know it. Moms know everything. Yeah. And it never once occurred to me that I could just not do them and say, "Yeah, well, I did them great today." But because of that, come on, you know, Isaiah. The Bible says, "My word will not return to me void." And we're talking about soil, right? The Bible says, "As the rain comes down and waters the earth, and 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 and, uh, and does not return again until." It waters the seed, and the seed springs forth fruit. So is my word that goes forth out of my mouth. Amen. It will not return unto me void, but it accomplishes that for which I sent it. Woo. And that is exactly what it what that did in my heart. And it, it, and it like Archie said, you're going to start out without a hunger and thirst. Because the Apostle Paul says, the flesh is at enmity with Christ and is constantly warring against it. When you get saved, your flesh does not. He, he also said, why do I do the thing? that I wish I, I did not do. Amen. And why don't I do the things that I wish I did do? That's because it's, and that's the Apostle Paul talking. Amen. It's because our flesh doesn't get saved when we do. Amen. But, but, but we take on the full armor of Christ in the book of Ephesians and we determine we're going to fight against it. That's salvation. It's, it's not my flesh is gone. It's, again, like Paul said, I buffet my body. I die to myself daily. Amen. Hey, we can keep going. We can go to Revelation. Yeah, no. I mean, seriously, though. Like, praise God. Praise God for the word. Like, I, I'm telling you, just ask any one of these guys. Say, hey, I, like, I want to share, right? I want to share my love of the scripture with you and love of Christ with you. Let iron sharpen iron. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And if you're ready, if you're ready for that, like just grab another person in this room that's just a little further along ahead of you and say, I want to do this. Like, I want to get the scripture in my heart as God is calling us to. Yeah, and I think one of the things and one of the traps that I fell into, you know, younger than that is I spend a lot of time being a good person, but not being a good Christian Hmm. or getting or keeping myself busy doing the churchy thing. And using that as a cheap substitute for actually digging into the Word and studying mm-hmm. and praying. Just busy doing busy church things. But it's just all on the surface and it's not really you know, digging in and studying mm-hmm. on God's Word. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, and today, it's way different. Like, share with us a little bit today. Like, how do you, just week to week, day to day, how do you find that time and that space? What worked best for you? You know, one of the things that I really enjoy especially now, is uh, you know, reading different books on different uh, subjects in, in the Bible, whether it's uh, prayers or spiritual warfare, um, spiritual leadership, discipleship, and, and I like to get different perspectives, especially from different time periods. You know, some are written in the mid-1900s, some are written in today, and I, and I always like to look at it and look at it in different versions of the Bible and, and see what's speaking to me mm-hmm. as I'm reading through it and, and, how it uh, and how it measures up to me. And, you know, thankfully, I have a a little bit of time between when I get off work now and my daughter gets home from school, well, I have this window built in every day of the week where I can study, I can pray, I can read, or I might take a walk and listen to uh, a biblical podcast or things like that. And I'm I finding that's very helpful to me mm-hmm. in my walk to keep that study and keeping that hunger and keeping that alive inside of me. That's right. The the YouVersion um, app and YouVersion or Bible.com website you can actually subscribe to a reading plan uh, 
even one of our small groups is adhering to another one year in the Bible reading plan. Like it's something phenomenal that keeps serving it back to you, saying, hey, inviting you back into the Bible daily. I, I'll tell you guys, the, the reading plans there constantly keep me in the Word and, and help me start along that path. So we're going to get to the finish line because, um, like, I love what we've been sharing. Let me get to our main scripture today, and we'll talk about it. John 4, 35. I love this because the urgency of obedience that Christ has. Listen to these words. Do you not say, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples, and, and the crowd is among them. There are yet four months, then the harvest comes. And he says, look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Look, lift up your eyes. Like what I want to say first and foremost is let's like I'm constantly telling myself this, Larry, like pay attention to what he's doing. Like don't don't let the distraction and don't let anything else get in the way of what he's doing because if we'll just follow him like he's going to bring us together on the same path it's the same in your marriages it's the same in your homes with your kids if you'll put him first like man he will pull you together even if right Whatever the circumstance might be, look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. What, what comes to mind, and some of you are watching The Chosen right now, um, The Chosen television show, like this crowd, they actually just recently played this scripture, this passage that we're in, and then it shows the crowds that are gathering all around them. Here's, here's what we're seeing. Here's what we're seeing in the scripture. Here's what we're seeing in that television show, The Chosen, about Christ and the disciples. They were intentional. And Jesus was saying, look, we are here to accomplish the master's will. Like we are here because we're recognizing that we are commissioned. Christ came to say, I'm here because I'm commissioned. And guess what? I'm calling you, sons and daughters, men and women, to be commissioned to go and plant these seeds. Who in here knows that they are commissioned, right? Like who in here knows that Jesus said, you are his disciples. And he says, I've got to go to the Father. I'm leaving this for you. This is for you. It's not for that one guy with the microphone in his hand. It's literally for every man and woman and child of God who says, I'm in and I'm ready. And he says, the fields are white for harvest. Like, let's look up. When we look up at the town of Cabot, we see believers, praise God. We see faithful men and women who are following Christ and living out the word, praise God. We see many denominations of that expression of faith and following Christ. Praise God, they're about following Jesus and living out the word of God. But we also see what? We also see those that he and the disciples and other churches and believers have already planted the word and the fields are ripe for harvest. The only way they're going to get harvest, you guys, is if you and I are faithful. The only way the harvest is going to happen, Jesus says, I will return when everyone knows. You guys know this scripture, right? When everyone has heard the good news, that's when I'll return. He came. He was intentional. He modeled to us what He wanted us to do. And here's a couple of final questions for us as we're talking about this. Last week we talked about God's Word and the life-changing reality of Jesus Christ being planted in each of us. Right? Right? Here's something I'm very passionate about. Like, if you guys want to know what I'm about, like 100%, it's this next thing that we're talking about. Who was it, and each of these guys can answer, who was it that first shared the gospel and God's word with you? And then answer the second part, since we're kind of running out of time. Who was it that also took the time to disciple you? The best memory, probably, um, I've got that one. It's an easy one. I was uh, 16, 
struggling through uh, high school as a young man. Um, went to church with a girlfriend, and this pastor was preaching the word of God, and all he had was his Bible in his hand, preaching the word of God. Just no notes, no slides, just the word of God. He's way, very spirit, way more spiritual than us modern day pastors. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, keep going. But anyway, it was week after week, and even after me and the girlfriend didn't work out so well, I still went because it, it was something so different about hearing the word of God. Hmm. I remember one Sunday, he, boy, he, he put the hammer down on uh, our hearts and, and what's in there. And, you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't wait to the end. Uh, I was going, I had a question I had to ask him. I ran up to the front, and after the end, I was like, so, so Pastor, so tell me again, are you sure if, if I'm committed, I'm all in, that God's going to bless me and pull me out of all this unrest? Hmm. And sure enough, he walked me for the next four years. He walked me through wow. uh, what true discipleship was, the bad, the ugly, and uh, thank God for the good uh, that he was able to show me. Um, and he invited me into like his home even, went on vacations with him and his family. They were great, great uh, people that understood that, uh, you know, I was an uh, open chair. I was a lost chair. Set beside that girl that I attended with. Wow. But just like Jesus did, you know, look around, look around. You all those empty seats. Those are our friends, our family members that are unsaved, unchurched, our co workers, our, our people in our community that we run across and, and run across at the grocery store. People that, that need to hear some encouragement. It goes back to my original comment about being obedient. Amen. God will make that happen if you're all in. If, you're, if your heart's all in the game, God will make those opportunities happen, and, and it's really not as hard as you think it is. It's just about being obedient, taking that first step. Just and trust them. God's got the rest. Just watch. Yeah, just trust them. And many of you, I've heard from you one on one, like you're there and you're trusting Him and you're taking a step forward. And I praise God for you. And I'm so excited because I know what's next. We've seen it. I know what's next when you just say, "I'm in." I'm taking that next step. For me, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little odd. Maybe peculiar. <laughs> so I remember probably my oldest memory of, of me thinking something was like, well, that's weird. That can't be true. Was I was like eight years old. I went to spend the weekend with my best friends and they took me to church on Sunday. We were in Sunday school and the lesson was on Jonah and the way. Hmm. And I distinctly remember that there's no way to live I don't know if that like sparked the curiosity or what. But fast forward to when I was 15, so seven years later, uh, my, my brother all of a sudden started going to church, and I thought that was really weird because I really knew my brother. That was really weird. Maybe a little past peculiar. <laughs> uh, but that church put on a play that was entitled The Trial of Robin Hood. Hmm. So, and, you know, obviously Robin Hood was with Jesus in the play, and, and after it was over, I just remember, I mean, like, literally, I can hear a voice in my head saying, you just need to go down there. So, the seed was planted with Jonah, hmm. and finally bore fruit at The Trial of Robin Hood. Wow. Praise God. God's word. He does the work. It's it's an and it is a mystery how it works. Like we don't know how the seed grows. It's it's like this invisible thing that's happening to the scripture is said. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. She's a faithful woman. Hmm. And, and this is the one I was, I was really missing. And yeah, she went, she, they went from being uh, on multiple homes 
it was a wonderful moment for a while and I was very willing uh, to find my voice or talk like my dad. Mm. And it was very good. Wow. And um, well, that trip was a lot of fun too. It was very fun. Yeah. Every day we go there satisfying the Lord. Amen. You know, and to Christ. And she has been single for her whole life. And as far back as I can look. Wow. And, Yep. Amen. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, for me, when we were kids, we would uh, walk next door to our grandparents' house and we would ride those churches, you know, like churches, those little churches, uh, campground road at the corner of campground and Perry Road. Wow. Uh, my grandma would be up there play the piano, listen to her sing, and I'll fly away, and my grandfather would uh, teach part of Sunday school in the mornings, and, and for me, you know, discipleship and learning for me happened here, at this church, mm. with us, yeah. you know, we started, you know, 10 years ago saying, you know, we don't mind, we'll, we'll go back and help with the kids' ministry, we'll go stack chairs and pick up trash, and God kept putting people in our lives uh, to learn from, to grow with, and to, uh, Eventually, end up where we are right now, you know, sitting up here today. And it's a testament to what we do here and the people that God has put in our lives and to listen um, to what He's saying. And that's uh, and that's my story. And yeah. or just a brief version of that story. I love it. Here. So we're going to wrap up with. We'll say now what, so we can we can get the band back in a moment. But I'm going to ask you guys to pray. To pray with us. And I want y'all, as we pray, I want us to think about, like first and foremost, as we talked about last week, Father, how is my soil? Right? Like, how is my heart? He has planted the seed in our heart, His Word, and the life-changing reality of Jesus Christ. But is it, is it taking root? Or do I have to deal with a hardened heart? Right? Like, Father, let me forgive if I've got a hardened heart, if I've been hurt by others. Right? Or it's along the rocky path where I've only been on this, this faith journey for a little while. My soil is only, right, a little deep. Father, I, I want to be in deep, rich soil. Father, let me surround myself with brothers and sisters that are in the Word. Right? This is the deep soil. And believe it or not, those trials and storms that come your way, it's an opportunity for us to say, Father, you're my deep soil. Like, I'm not going to depend on this world anymore. I'm not going to depend on these unbelievers like advice for me to be happy. Like, I want to be holy. I want to live out what God is calling me to. I'm going to get, I'm going to go to his word. Right? So just... Think about your heart. And then I'm going to piggyback on what these guys said. Then, as Jesus said first, let's lift up our eyes and see that the fields are ripe. They're white for harvest. That if it is our job to take the word to our neighbor, let us be faithful. Right? If it's our job to invite the neighbor's kid into our home as a refuge because they don't have a refuge in their home and take them to church on Sunday, like, amen, let's do it. If it's our job to, like, speak life and truth and love and forgiveness 
into those that are showing up that have no idea what that means. And we can say, I'd love to introduce you to Christ. I'd love to introduce you to God's Word. And I'm not perfect, but guess what? I'm, I'm heading in the right direction. Let's pray. Father God, we're here for you. You are how we find good soil. Father, you gave us your word. You gave us your son. And like the faith of a mustard seed, you said, if you will just take this, take him, accept him, believe what he's saying, believe what he's called you to, and open up your heart and mind and let nothing else distract. I promise you, I will do what only I can do. That's what God says. Father God, don't let it stop with us. Help us lift up our eyes and see those that desperately need you today. It's why we're here. We're here to give you glory, to praise you, to sit in his word, chew on your word together, and then we're going to go out and share with others. Help us be bold. Thank you for being the reason and being the resource for giving us the path, for giving us your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.